you have the power to control the information that people receive and thus massively influence the perceptions that they have. And from their perceptions comes their behavior, comes what they will accept, what they won't accept, what they'll challenge, what they won't challenge. It's it's an extraordinary uh, centralization of power. Obviously, Gary, if you got like massively famous father, how did that influence you growing up on how you are today? Um, it was a, it's a, a weird one because as because I was only young to go from being wherever you went. Like these are days before camera phones, obviously. But wherever you went, some people would want to shake his hand or get an autograph or whatever. Like, you know, dad's a legend mm. um, on the BBC or whatever to basically being laughed at and shouted at in the street. And it seemed to happen in the space of about 45 seconds. So as a kid, yeah. that's quite confusing because it's like, oh, hang on a minute, I don't really understand. And um, they tried the best to shelter all of us, really, fr from that kind of rubbish as it as it went off. But... You know, it wasn't nice getting stick as a kid. Mm. Um, not nice at all. And, and the, the weird, the weirdest thing for me now as a, as an adult is that the things that the kids were saying was coming from the newspapers, and kids don't read newspapers, which means it was coming from the parents. Yeah. And I think you know, like my, my daughter goes to school with with people with with um, disabilities, people that have um, you know family members with drug problems that you see at the school gate and all that kind of stuff. And that's like me saying to my little one, "Oh, you know that kid in your class? You know their dads are blah blah blah." Yeah. The the idea of doing yeah. that is mad yeah. to me. Um, but obviously these parents were doing that, so that was very strange. And then so the, all these pilots and all these um, all these uh, architects they're, they're talking nonsense as well. Right? They're talking nonsense. They, they've set up these organisations for nothing. Right? Right? I don't, I don't know. No, you don't know. I, 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 you don't know. I you don't know. And you, don't know and that's, <laughs> you don't know, and that's the problem. Right. And you know something else? You won't even bother to know either. But it gave me an eye into the media as well. You know, like the tabloids were offering my poor friends' parents, not, not my wealthy friends' parents, but my poor friends' parents' money to say bad things about our family which they all refused to do, which, you know, one, one particular friend of mine, like his family had nothing, like less than nothing. So for them to turn down big money was incredible. Um, so that gave me a bit of an eye into just, you know, just what these people are willing to do to, you know, to screw people over basically. Um, and now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 42 and I, I'm, you know, gobbing off about the COVID stuff and all this sort of thing. And I look back and I think, that was, all, that was just basic training, that. Taking all that abuse, taking all that crap, realising that actually it's just words, man. It don't yeah. mean it. You know, if I hadn't had that, would I have stood on a stage at Trafalgar Square in, in front of tens of thousands of people? Probably not, to be fair. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. That's, where, that's where I first come across you. I, I was at, in Trafalgar Square that day oh, yeah. when you, you did your speech, and it inspired me. It was good. It was really good. Thanks. Your dad spoke that day, didn't he? Yeah. You did. There was a fella from, uh, a Jody fella was talking about the 5G stuff that day. Oh, uh, Mark Steele, that had been. Mark Steele. Yeah. Because I would just gain into all this at the, at the moment, What what's going off in our world, you know what I mean? I'd always yeah. been a bit sceptical of certain stuff, and uh, but that really made me start researching and, yeah. and how we were just put down, how the people were being put down at that stage. It was a turning point, that Trafalgar Square, though, because I'd been going around the country. I'll be honest, right? I, I never thought I'd be giving speeches. It wasn't anything I, I wanted to do, really. So one of the things on the chart, uh, Biden's chart of coercion was occasional indulgences, right? So let people have a little bit. There's a biscuit, mate. There you go. Enjoy that. And what it does, that encourages compliance, right? And that's exactly what they've done. They're going to give us Christmas. And um, just as a little sort of segue to that, um, I've seen quite a lot of people saying, Boris is an idiot. Why is he giving him Christmas? You know, he's, he's, he's not doing it because he wants to do it. Trust me. He's doing it because he has to do it. Yep. Because as was displayed in the second lockdown, no one complied. Woo! And so no one's going to no no comply. No one's going to go, oh, I want to see my mum at Christmas, but the fat Milky Bar kid said I can't, so I'm not going <laughs> to. Um, but I got asked to speak in, in Birmingham, and it's quite funny because I, where I run dad's, my dad's stuff, the, all the emails come through to me. So I was getting an email to try and get Dad booked for this Birmingham protest. Yeah. And Dad was speaking at another protest that day. Um, so I said, oh, you know, I'm really sorry. He's actually, I can't remember where he was, but he was somewhere else down south. And um, so then I got an email then to me just saying, you know, we've identified you as like the main person we want to speak. 
obviously not realising that I'm the one that's answered the email <laughs> saying that they want dad. But do you know what I mean? I just thought, no, at least I need to do something. I need to get out there and do something. And um, because I was, I was saying stuff vocally, obviously on social media, and I was getting private messages from friends that were going, mate, I'm with you, but I can't say it yeah. because I'll lose my job. Exactly. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So it kind of became a bit more of an, almost an obligation then. So well, actually, okay, well, I've got to shout louder because I, yeah. I work for myself. I can't sack myself. So I'll just shout louder then. So I ended up giving this speech in Birmingham. And um, yeah, it went all right. And it seemed mm. to, you know, resonate with people. And I thought, all right, maybe this is what I can do then to try and do something. So then I was just traveling around the country. But, you know, it's, it wasn't quite one man and a dog, but it wasn't far off. And I remember being one in London, and I think it was like 600 people. I think it was Hyde Park, it was about 600 people. And within a month and a half, it was 40,000. It just literally, yeah. just it popped. Yeah. Um, where I think so many people had already been skeptical. Because I think, I think you know when you're being lied to. I think, I think inherently we kind of, yeah. you know, we've all had it when you go to yeah. a pub and one of your mates comes along and he's like, oh, this is Dave, I work with Dave. All right, Dave, nice to meet you. And Dave's chatting away. But when he leaves, you go, that Dave guy's full of shit, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> but but you, don't, yeah. you don't know he's full of shit, but you just, it resonates that he's a bullshitter. And so, you know, I think a lot of people were looking at that five, those 5pm 5 briefings and looking at Johnson and going, I'm being lied to here. And they don't quite know why or how <laughs> or in what level, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think by that point of Trafalgar Square, I think you had 10% of people kind of knew what was going on and were being vocal about it. And yeah, tens percent of people maybe that would just, I mean, they, they'd buy an inflatable dartboard off you if you tried to sell it to them. They're just that gullible. But then there was that 80, that big, huge 80% that was just like, something ain't right. And so they started to, to come over at that point. We are the 99.99% and when we stand together in non-compliance, the game is over. We've been told to stop people dying. We must stop living. I won't accept that. That's not, my that's not my new normal. Nothing changes a society more than war, but bombs are expensive and they're loud and populations have had their fill. So we come to silent weapons for quiet wars. A war for our mind and for our acquiescence. We are in the third world war right now and a shot hasn't even been fired. The UK governmental policy during this so-called pandemic has not been driven by doctors and virologists, it's been driven by psychologists because it's a war for our mind. SAGE is taking advice from the Behavioural Insights team, a department of UK government whose sole purpose is to nudge you into a way of thinking psychologically so you will act in a way they desire. Fear. Fear is the currency of control. That's why we were shown leaked footage of people in China literally dropping dead in the street. Why did that never happen anywhere else? They built hospitals everywhere. They built morgues everywhere. All with taxpayers' money. They never used them, but they were never going to use them because they weren't designed to be used. They were designed to scare the living shit out of us so we'd accept the lockdown. 